Yes. Time I, the reason I say that is because every time I do this, there's always somebody who argues with me, and it's because they don't know the first basic aspects of theology. In the church's tradition, by the way, again, we're back to tradition. In the church's tradition, there are two kinds of graces. The first is graces which may be pleasing to God. So there's two kinds of graces. Those which make you pleasing to God. And those which are gratuitously given. The ones that make you pleasing to God are sanctifying grace, that's the indwelling of the blessed trinity in your soul, and actual grace, which enlightens the mind and strengthens the will in order to do the right thing. Then there's gratuitous graces, and these gratuitous graces deal with things like the charismatic gifts, as well as things like uh, vocation to the priesthood, Things of that sort. Okay. The charismatic graces, insofar as they are gratuitously given, the fathers of the church, the doctors of the church, the entire church itself, it's actually defined in Trent that graces gratuitously given are incapable of being merited. You cannot pray for them, and God gives them to you. You cannot do offer something up to get them. You can't do anything to get them. They are gratuitous purely on the side of God. It says it right in Scripture, He gives them to him as he wills, which means that there's nothing you can do. So people say, oh, well, you can give the gift of tongues if you just sit here and open yourself up to the Spirit. It's I should, I should, should have a Honda. I'm sorry, but it's not going to work that way. <laughs> because the church has defined that these things cannot be gained that way. This came into the Catholic Church from the Pentecostals who did not have a proper theology of grace. So when they, they thought that you could just do these things and then you would get them. And then, of course, there was all these misinterpretations of St. Paul where these things are talked about. Okay. That being the case, the worst case of possession that I ever had was a woman who asked for the gift of tongues and she got it. There are three kinds of gifts. There's three, when you talk about tongues, there's three kinds. The first is the, for instance, if you talk about tongues, there's three kinds. First is the authentic. And in Scripture, we see it playing itself out. There's two kinds. The first is the person speaks their language, so you have language A, but the other person hears language B. So when Peter got up there and started preaching, everybody from all over the Place, had heard their own language. The second is, is that God infuses in you the knowledge of the language so you actually know what you're saying. That, to keep that in mind. So you speak the, the language that's infused in you and the person hears that language. So in the case of Philip, when he goes to see the Enoch, God gives him the gift of tongues so that he can actually go and actually evangelize the eunuch. Okay. Now, what is that? why is this the case? The reason it's the case that you actually know what you're saying is because God, St. Thomas says, is a, there's a principle. God always uses an instrument according to the nature of an instrument, the nature of that instrument. We are intelligent creatures. God doesn't use us in a way when we're supposed to be doing something volition or voluntary or speech or things like that sort. He doesn't use us unless we know what we're doing. He infuses the knowledge, and then from there we can actually know what we're doing. That knowledge of knowing what you're doing is how you distinguish it from the diabolic form. The diabolic form is that there's a speech pattern, an authentic pattern of speech. There's speech coming out, a language coming out of the person's mouth, and they don't know what they're saying. That's what I talked about earlier. Then there were some human studies where they, where they did some studies where they found out there's a human form. And what this human form is, is they say it's not even really a language. What they found out is that the people that were doing this, so it's speaking in tongues, and it was purely human, it wasn't one of these other two, is a person didn't know what they were saying because they weren't saying anything. And they discovered that by close and scientific analysis, 
that the patterns of speech that they, that they talked with normally as, a, as an individual were showing up in the same thing, just a little bit jumbled around. It was, it was just purely human. That's just purely human. Now, people say, you know, I pray to God in my gift of tongues. Let me ask you this. If someone came up to you and just started whacking, speaking to you, you went, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> what would you think? <laughs> like, crazy. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Why do they think God doesn't think that? <laughs> right? Well, he knows what's in my heart. Yeah, but that doesn't have anything to do with what's coming out of your mouth. The second thing is, is this is dangerous because doing this, in this particular case, the demon is speaking through the people, but when you, when you say, oh, I just opened myself up to the Spirit and then the stuff comes out, there's a name for that called channeling. It's where you open yourself up and let the spirits speak through you. This is one of the reasons why I tell people that's why this woman became possessed, because it was a superstitious behavior that she was engaging in, and as a result, she became possessed as a result of it. I cannot tell you, when I was in the Diocese of Omaha, because the first place I was an exorcist was for the Archdiocese of Omaha, I cannot tell you how many people I had to clean up from the charismatic renewal of the number of the media killer. I have the highest estimation of some of these people because they're actually serious about their spiritual life, they're trying to do the right thing, they're one of the few people warfare seriously, etc. But what they're doing is an adoption from the Protestants and has nothing to do with the history of the Catholic Church. Nothing. And as a result of that, it's really dangerous. <clears throat> so being slain in the spirit, there is no such charismatic gift. It's not real. In fact, I think a lot of it's just uh, psychological.